بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل إني أمرت أن أعبد الله مخلصا له الدين وأمرت لأن أكون أول المسلمين قل إني أخاف إن عصيت ربي عذاب يوم عظيم قل الله قل الله أعبد مخلصا له ديني فاعبدوا ما شئتم من دوني قل إن الخاسرين الذين خسروا أنفسهم وأهليهم وأهليهم يوم القيامة ألا ذلك هو الخسران المبين صدق الله العظيم جزاك الله خير and بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم مرك إن شاء الله تعالى وحن جذجلنا ونبلابنا نا برنامج كنا and organization ka and how shan so diariye i'm a sponsor wahali da da one on one youth development mission ka i'm a arakti da der uleya hai wahawaye dat ka dalan yarada ah e da di no kala ah e qof ka sto iniko me shan for dia o kulamida in a design kalsoni da kurdiyana i'm a kubiyan qof ka z wahqabat ki se iya wahtar ki se and sida ad okson tihin and that can be done in the same way, and it can be done in the same way, and it can be done in the same way, and it can be done in the same way, and it can be done in the same way, and it can be done in the same way. And in this way, we will be able to do this, and 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 we will be able to do this, نوعونا إن شاء الله تعالى نوعون سودوي إن أنا دلني هذا كودي رجلنا وحيابها عن قبلنا وحاكم هذا and وحنسمينا small book clubs وجدد يسوي هاي إنه يسون عنق أسج كلية الله حلين عنقه وجاري كرهير إن تو صهر استعجل دتك سيد decision law سميو persistence سيد سدو أشقيو and مسكح هذا في عن سيد أشقيسو and إن أنا أسج الله دوف سن سيد أشقيسو all those things أي كمية هاي تاسو كلفيسا إن إسن إلمه إنه إسن أهين كليه كوا وحلاش يجو الجارسيسن كوا أن كل سوني كو قبنا أو أيجو وحلاش يكره محل ودن كان أنو جونا أمريكا إلمه دباتوين آدو بدن بلكل من هديسن هلين بارنتي أما وارد وحكد جيسنا يا أيجو نو حنو بحنا إن أي جاران هير أي كل سوني نفتو دكو قبان أما قفك دبك كو هيا أما وح أي دبك هو أركان أما وح أي أجدده تهاي أشيء كره، and مرك إن شاء الله تعالى دار is the أجدده and organization كان أصلا ميني أكدم بس and ما أنت ميش أنا جوكت وحن ما أنت مانت ما أنت ميش أنا جوكنا وحن آمين سن هاي أن أرجنا أذر مجاء، يا يا أذر كرامو أذر وحن أرجنا كرامو إنه يهاي future كي سلمان إنه future كي محمد إنه future كي هاي إن أذن إنكو تهين the future كي ومدينا وحكفي عن ولا مال قليل نهانا أي سنشرين إنك كان المال قليل نو هذا ركتان وحن سمعنا إن this book club وقت آدي هذا دار وحن ربع إن شاء الله تعالى إنت ولا على يال كان أو professional كا أو time كي energy كا نو قليل إنه ماشى إنه هذا أن نجوا أيقة أم بيجرين إنه لكن من سن إنك إن أتين future كي إن لا نهالي دونا دور قفوض أو كقيب قاتة برنامج كنا إن أنا ويا راح دير برهالي كده جو أو أي نيشي كان سي أدو لفتك يا تمر أفلون ترجعيسه وح أي كبنا في تجريان وسيد أي برنامج هو أركان دل يرد أسو أنت بدني أن أدو أقانه ماشى أي كبلا بين برنامج كان أن قرنايو وحن كبلا بيا مصطفى مصطفى إن شاء الله تعالى وحن نرشى دونا أم نشرح دونا and بوجان أم بوقت الأخير أم دتك إن لهور استاجا أم إن كل سوني دل كبعية وح أسجع وكفائدة my name is مصطفى حسان and today I'm representing one-on-one youth development. I'll be giving my small speech in English because I'm hoping that everyone understands. Yes, yes. Uh, okay. Today I'm representing one-on-one youth development. In my two minutes, I would like to talk about this, the use of reading, what importance it has on us young people today. The importance of reading is a habit that all people need. Everyone should build it or to be successful in life. There are many different types of books to be read. 
the type of book I'm telling you to read or I'm motivating you to read here today is the type of books that you can really reflect on your life. The type of book that no matter what type of goals, dreams, or inspirations you have, the type of book that you can really imitate it on your life, no matter what stage your life you're in. One book that the youth, one-on-one uh, -on -one youth development are reading to this week in our book club is Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hills. This book was published in 1937. That's almost 100 years from our ago today. But yet this book has helped leaders in the past and still does to this day. You can understand from that that knowledge and success really never dies. It just goes on. The world has a lot of smart people and educated, but they lack the wisdom to put their wisdom to the next level. So what we try to help you guys with today is the books that will help you, give you the motivation, the self-drive to be able to stand in front of people and to talk to them. Let me sign off with these words. The best investments that you ever, you'll ever make is the investments that you made to build yourself. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. سيدا عركتان أما كل سوني ده أقوم وقت مصطف وحان حسوس تامرك يقول رسول وبلابي سيدا سماهين وحان الرب أنا إن كل رجليه قف كستو إنك إنك مذا وحان إنك رجعين إنه وأنا وقت يعني تايم كأنه قلني إن البرير نقطة the next person أو مشان سو استعجلها أو دي رجلين تحس نفتي سه يكوه كلا بوس سماه سيدا مصطف شجع وكلا and مده هذا اللي جوجا بيل أي حاجة بمحن and سمعنا إذا بوق إنه أخيرا عند الله يرضو 1000 people of Somalia ما يلبى ذن كتشوجا كينيا كتشوجا and بانو كبلونا some of you على سواتان our social media platforms إن بدن بدرك إسا أو ساس بوق أو جهل إسا وجدد ذا يقول كأن كله إنه هنا وحواي إنه عنو كلسوني كو قبو أيدي ذا أسقى مسكح إذا سكوت شرطة إنه دتك الله سهر استعجو أو آمن سينه وح المهنة وجب ذن أباهين أما أباهن تي عند الله يرضو إنه حواي for إنه كلسوني إنه تكو قبتو قفك أديك أتاه وجد هذا ما أنت سومالي أنا وها الله يحرر أنا إني شجعه هذا ذن سومالي فهم كرين عب معه لكن وأنا فهمت أنا سومالي تهاي إدنتي جاكون ويا هاي سومالي أوكي so أنا قال stay in the Somali مركن the next person إن شاء الله تعالى ويا رأيه and or come with that thousand people many who can one thousand people like in we selected couple of them in our Arakan in Tina Erica or at Fahantan why an we are needed can professional ka ujjeda dum haita kalsuni in at ku qabto qofka adiga atay go anka adigo ad garto fi ano warid ka gaya ulumadu no ay kukula taliyan ala istayi karto dihi karto awane wuhan raba dakhtari na nukudu awane wuhan raba ina wuhas nukudu awane wuhan wuhas nukudu u san uduna adiga ka badalin meyshe ayyogu raba na ay san kuche din next person arraba insha Allah ta'ala ina anu yaro wa aisho aisho na ayyudu no hai kam itahe thousand people ka so buga sana la akhina ya wahi no shi gudu nta benefit ka ule yahay insha Allah uh, my name is Aisha. I am a member of One and One Youth Development for a couple of years. And I would love to discuss with you today the benefits of being a member of One on One. But maybe that will be a topic for another day because we, have, uh, we don't have a limited time. But what I would like to discuss with you today is just one topic or one importance of being a member of this group, and that's the reason of why to read books. We know we encourage people why to read books, but there is a lot of reasons behind it. So I would like to share with you why it is important for me to read books and as well as why it's so important for you guys to read books. So there is so much research done about the importance of books. And 2013, there was a research done by Harvard University about the importance of books. And they interviewed thousands of people and they found out that 88% of those people are successful. And the reasons why they are successful, they say the main factor that they are successful is because of the books they read and the people they associated with. So I would like to encourage you guys to read those books and associate <coughs> with the right people. We also, uh, in those research, they also talked about um, scientifically the reasons why reading books are important. And one of the things they said is, Reading books makes you active and engaging, as well as the people that read books and have said that good habit of reading books have experienced less, mem less, time of, less time of losing their memory than other people that did not get to that habit. 
And again, there's so much benefits of reading books, but I also like to read and add, um, when you read book, you learn about yourself, you grow, you change. And I would like to mention growing is now a one-time thing. It's a life-changing process. And when you do it a lifetime and you grow and learn about yourself, you're empowering yourself. And you know what they say, knowledge is power, right? So if knowledge is power, knowledge about yourself is self-empowerment. And when you're powered about your, and yourself, you can empower, and when you empower yourself and control yourself from yourself, because one of the things that we have to control ourselves is from ourselves. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his prophet told us, so when you have that power and that control over yourself, you can help other people do the same. And when you learn about yourself again, you, it's easy, it gets easy for you to learn from other people and learn other people. And when you learn other people, you can teach them to learn from themselves and who they are as well as the people around them. Uh, when you read in books, there's so much stories, there's so much connections that happens. And there's so many people that talk about their failure as well as about their success. So they share with you their journey and when they did to get to their, where they are. So when you're reading about story, you connect with them, right? So that does not mean like you have <clears throat> to take their um, journey or you're not gonna have your own journey or you're not gonna have your own experience. It basically means you read from that person's failure and success. And because of that, it's gonna save you some time, energy and money for you to go the same path that person had, even though you still have to uh, learn from your mistakes and from your um, experience. And sometimes we will see in the one-on-one -on -one group, uh, youth development, people that will tell you, we will start reading, but there's no ideal time that you will start reading. So everyone has choices in life, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us choices, right? So you have the choice to make it today that you will, start, you will start today reading, or you have the choice to start reading five years from now on. But again, the choices is up to you. So you choose wisely, inshallah. Um, they also said, if you read one topic, it can be a leadership, it can be a communication, it can be a financial, it can be spiritual and learning from your faith. If you choose one topic and learn that one topic in five years, you become the master of that topic. That means you, ha it's like you have a PhD in that topic. And anyone that wants to learn from that topic can basically come to you and you can be a resource for them. So I would highly encourage to choose wisely again, because you don't want to regret five years from now on and say, oh, I wanted to better myself and um, better my communication, so why didn't I not start it yesterday? Like, why did I not start it five years ago? Um, I would like to conclude with one thought or one question. Uh, Jim Brown says, um, and Eli, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills, we will be here in five years for those of us who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us. So in five years, you will reach somewhere. But where you, you miss five years, you will reach a destination. But the question is, is that the destination you want or is not? If you think it about right now, you can change something from now instead of seeing in five years. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, if Steve's job or iPhone same, I do could the whole iPhone car will hook up with one, you two, you three, and that's some so. But some like, how many of you? That's how we use the iPhone. Is that right? That's how we use the iPhone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala marku buga Quran ka no so the jay ayad the Quran ka no mehamis sallallahu alayhi wa sallam no kuku so diwem hawa. I wanted to hear from you. The conversation has to be in two ways. Okay, yeah, you shake it. Ayad the Quran ka ugoris. Yeah. The goal is in Iqra. Let me show you another way. We have chairs and we have tables. We have fandal and we have qado. Lakin ilahi subhanahu wa ta'ala before that we have nasiye a three. جيد بو أبو راي، لكن نمسينين كرسجة يميسك أتكفر لذا قاعد هذا يفندال كنا نمسينين وحو على سبحانه وتعالى نسي عقلي وحونا نتوسي جيد كي أنا جا وحنا الكرب إن شاء الله تعالى إن ذات كونكشن كاسين نسمعن. What books will do for you every things or every situation or every challenge you have it will help you to grab it up or finish it. But the goal is for you to use your mind. A lot of us book to an agyalan, we have an agyalan, we have an agyalan, the reason we're not reading, we have an agyalan, 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 we have an agyalan
I mean, Stephen Herford had no, the goal is for you to understand when you read Sida Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yiri. Um, book in al Kuguso, Dere, Nebu Bahamas, Salazon, Al Kuguso, Dibe, Noloshena, Adfanta, Wahaku, Hore, America, Akhres, and Eta, and your brain is developed. That is how you can change. Are you with me? Okay, that's what Haram and And the membership of one on one, you don't have to pay nothing. It's for you to commit it and say, I'm going to in the Konaya, the group of the people, or Messages Kan Kuheran, or reading Kakuchirta, or Raptodatka and Elahadash, or Nafto the Kalsoni question. Is that something we can do? Okay, that's good. Uh, the last young one, we are, inshallah ta'ala, then Markas and Hangeli Dona, Walalehen. And I'm going to call to Muhammad, inshallah ta'ala, to take a two minutes. Uh, Muhammad is my friend. Uh, other people, I did not say anything. Muhammad, we have in a program of reading the books even since I can remember. Muhammad, what am I getting paid? Muhammad is my son. What am I getting paid? Muhammad, what am I getting paid? Then now, give me my subway or McDonald's. So, I saw in the book, I saw in the book, I saw in the subway, I saw in the book, and I saw in the book, and now he's grown up. Up and uh, now he's one of the one-on-one -on -one youth development, and he's going to tell us in a minute or two what he benefited by the book. And I appreciate it, Muhammad, for you taking the time. Huh? My name is Muhammad, and I'm one of the members of one-on-one -on -one youth development. I wanted to tell you guys about the importance of reading books. Mahatma Gandhi once said, "Be the change you want to see in the world." And the question comes: How can we make change? You can't make change without action. An action alone, for example. Right now, if I throw a punch, that was an action, but that was a negative action. So what, is, what action do I have to do to make a positive action? So a positive action is caused when you have knowledge. So where is knowledge? Knowledge is acquired in books. You cannot tell me that you're going to be somewhere or you're about to do something without showing me the evidence that you know, have the knowledge to reach there. When someone reads a book, when I read a book, I don't know about other people, when I read a book, I feel like it teaches me, it puts me in the shoes of those who wrote, who wrote the book. I can see from their perspective. I can learn from their failures and I can learn from their successes. And I will conclude with this. Reading is a force and our brains are rubber band. The more you read, the wider the rubber band expands and the more knowledge you know and the vast, and the more knowledge you know, and the vast as the, and as vast the universe you can grow. Now that is the that can or one on one youth can come with or an imbadon of for the or had the maga abin in mesh and a nekamidihin um Salman Hakamida Hada. I'm not gonna name it. Like in Intin and Kamida Hain or Narajukta and inshallah ta'ala and at Kamid Nokoto in Ad Nokoto the next person who community get your nefties in Korej Garenla. Wahan u goodaya or alehen or professional ka and we have a doctor in Liban. Uh, Dr. Liban and I are in the year of Islamana. But all successful people are one thing in common. They know success coming after a struggle. Okay. For him, he you know, practice a medical. We have a shake case and the challenge is to offer him. Then I ask a question. I say, I think a challenge is to offer him. And I am going to ask a question. Emergency and, and emergency hospital or emergency clinics. And uh, how come El Mehe and Mesha and Kudashe, I said, Ufa and Senein, in a Adigo Kate, Lace Adigo Kate, a school kid, me, six, seven years a Kuka to in a practice gusho. El Mehe and Lablo Sadah Bro, I said, sort of go in a patient case. And I like what he says, and that is the one of the things I'm in fight Garene, in a man in a Kadagistan. He says, Anaga Somali, the Wawinka, we have Kalsoni, El Mehe and Havin Akon, lacking they did not have in Kalsoni. Okay. حاجات كو أركيسا أما أتقول لي سا دكتور ولالكا أما ذيركا بابتجا أو إنتو كوي ما استرجل كي أمريكا عشة كنا سيأد أوهشوا أما أدو جرت كل سوني تن أسقو هستو كلا مركا دكتور كأنا مقام هذا إلنا يا thank you for your coming I really really appreciate it we cannot pay you like we will in a cool promise you know your time is not being wasted we're gonna produce so many speakers cast Allah or Kale you so many others or tomorrow community again one of the asset inshallah to Allah dealer the bamba later uh really Marco uh it's not much I should say first of course uh Marco for Han is a program can uh really add one even pretty well in the game on the West 
uh, we try to do something like this in, in the West, in Edinburgh side. And the reason is, Shan Aruran Leon with five children, and my oldest child is 20 years old. He's just finishing, or about to finish in UFM in three weeks, inshallah. Uh, and I really, I, in a uh, really smart kids, uh, but some kind of naive kids. You know, they are what they call street smart and, 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 and book smart, right? Uh, we school could easy ba looga saari kara chit code ay haystaan right uh, and the, one of the reasons is they are, they are followers uh, they, they are not leaders unfortunately so uh, i'm going to start with my what my background was anu uh, somali an kudu me high school ki then scholarship ba anu halay turkey so turkey ban aadi medical school ki turkey ban kudu me medical school ki turkey wallah sanu Six years. And then after son of Hansen made in infectious diseases. And then before all this, it was one year of Turkish language. So six plus four plus one, that's what, 11? And then Marek Malik. Marek Alka and Midbu Halle, oh, you are a four year medical graduate. And unfortunately, you don't have what they call American had his own experience. And then, so sorry, we, we cannot do anything for you. That's after I did high school and the COVID was sort of, of oh, education. And then I said, whoa, so what should I do now? So I started following doctors, Somali doctors, American doctors, and you know, in regions and HCMC, Hennepin County, and Fairview, Southdale, and all the hospitals, you know. It took me three, four years. Back in 2004, I finished my uh, exams, uh, they, what they call USMLE, United States Medical Licensing Exam. Uh, and then I said, okay, I'm ready. So can I go in now? And they said, whoops, sorry. What you did was what they call observation. It, you were just shadowing people, doctors. So you were not touching patients. So sorry. <laughs> I said, whoa, <laughs> then what? What should I do now? So someone else would have just gave up, right? Say, okay, enough is enough. I'm almost 40 years old, and I did all this, and I, they're still telling me I'm not qualified, so I should give up. But I didn't do that. And I asked, what was the first Sunday? I really remember that day, like yesterday. Oh, yeah, and of course, one of the reason I'm telling my house, and my wife, and I, you gotta make sure that if you are, uh, male in a house in inshallah, in the future, and if you are female, you're male kag, you have to be very connected to each with each other. I mean, when Adi is good with him, it's very, very important. One word for this Sunday, Hanri, you know, I can, I will do what I can do. I will try my best. And ilahi hadu iqoray in a wahanri da'al, it will happen, right? And that's exactly what has happened. Residence Kivangali, residence Kivandemi, family medicine Bandemi, and then I went to the emergency. So I'm now emergency physician, emergency room physician, emergency medicine for the last seven years. The, uh, the things that I will tell you for you guys is as advice is, and I tell my kids is a couple notes, the notes I have here. Uh, uh, like it's an ocean. And you are trying you are trying to not to be wet, right? And you are in the ocean, which is kind of impossible. So we have to develop some strategies. You have to have some points. Number one, and the first and very important thing is your religion. How many of you get up for Fajr, Salat al-Fajr. MashaAllah. That's a very good sign. Salat al-Fajr. If you get up wake for Salat al-Fajr, that's a discipline. There's a reason Allah said you have to get up at 5 a.m., at 4 a.m. There's a reason behind it. Of course, Allah said, man, I didn't create jinn kind and mankind, except, right? 
you have to worship for me. And the reason is Allah is training you. You have to worship for Allah, but it's a training, it's a discipline. If you cannot get up from the bed at 4 a.m. and go to the bathroom and clean yourself and get your wudu, it's, life will be difficult for you. So you gotta make sure that you do your Salat al-Fajr. Your deen tired, don't ever let go of your religion, no matter what. Don't let go who you are. Don't let go your outside. I mean, what do you wear? Your hijab for, for girl, I have a doubt. They will try to intimidate you. They will intimidate you. Don't ever let that happen. It's very important. Number two, your identity gag. You don't have to change who you are. Number three, discipline. Very important. Timing. If you, if someone, you have an appointment at 10 a.m., make sure that you are there at 9.45, 9.50. It's very important. This is from Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam. Or sunnah. Very important. Be, be, try to be best of whatever you are doing. Even if you are working in the environmental services, right? Like, they are look killing grains. You have to be at the at best. Make sure that whatever you are doing at the driver tie, try to be the best. Be organized. You have to be clean. Not only your, your body, but your room. You start from your room. You have to be clean. Very important. I always tell my children, nothing is easy and nothing is difficult. It's all how you approach. It's all how you do it. It's, it, it's, it's in your hands. And the last is be a leader. Don't be a follower. If you are a follower, you will be in, you will be in deep trouble. A lot of our kids are unfortunately. And the reason is they trust someone that they shouldn't trust. So know who your, know your environment around, who is around you. Uh, unfortunately, Abiyashin, Yehoyashin, Wudenkin, the Kayimid, Education for An Malha, they they are very good people. They are trying their best, right? They are trying in a kufid garayan, on toxian, darkusian. Like they cannot, they don't communicate with their kids. That's what we are seeing, unfortunately. So there's miscommunication between mom and dad and, and kids. But but know that your mom and dad are your best friends. Always talk to them. Wahaka karinin abayoyada la hadal la fariso we kuchaliye. Salad dada, I will close with the last thing is salad dada. Make sure you get a salad dada. Salad dada, salad dada. Inshallah. So, we so going to do a And our final and, and speaker, our note, uh, keynote speakers, Abdul Samad, and Wanin Marakti, very successful. Wanin Wadden Kar Wakubarte, Wanin Yimid Wakti Adu Der, Abafi Anna, Inshallah Ta'ala, Dila Hirado. وحنا only كوبي جرين أنا أسقي يا دمام بروفيشنال كي صدق حس وحياة رضا نني شيء عبد الكسر دوما ولا الكيس. مركو فرحان إن شاء الله أي ويري عبد السمد can I ask you to come and participate in a program? I did not hesitate. That's something new for me. I don't like. I'm a very humble person. I don't like to show off. I like to, you know, be part of the crowd. Um, but this time I said, it's going to be different. I'm going to participate. I'm going to come speak before the youth. As Farhan said, and I'm going to talk about myself a little bit. Actually, I came to this country at a very young age. I was about to turn 18. And I can tell you something today. Tomorrow is my birthday. And I'm going to turn 56. So you'll make the calculation. I will be 56 years old tomorrow. And um, I, was about seven, I was 17 when I came to this country. That's many, many years ago. There was no FaceTime. There was no Facebook. There was no, in fact, cell phones. You couldn't talk to anybody. So I had a ritual to speak with my parents back home. My English was very limited. I was just Liban, just Liban. Who, by the way, it was a very heart-touching, warm story. And I'm going to share something along those lines as well. I didn't speak English. A uh, skinny little kid from Mogadishu. Um, what happened? I went to English class. 
Uh, it was in Portland, Oregon. Uh, primarily, all the students were from Far East Asia. So, Mali Mahan, we are not in there. Come on. I was the only black kid, African kid. Um, I did relatively well. My English was decent. I took something called TOEFL, Test of English as a Foreign Language, back then. Um, what that means was you have to get a certain scores in order to be able to accept it into the university. So back then we were foreign students. In fact, they used to call us legal aliens. Does anybody know what illegal alien is? What is illegal alien? Undocumented, right? We don't call them nowadays aliens. Back in the days, your green card, by the way, it was never green to begin with. You understand that? A lot of you were born here, so you don't know that. But those of us who became U.S. citizens through the naturalization process, first we get the green card, right? But the green card, which is the permanent status, is really never green. So don't ask me why they call it green card. By the way, so what happened? Um, so with foreign students, you have to take a test called Test of English as a Foreign Language. You have to pass it. I sat in class. My English is still limited. You can imagine that, unlike Muhammad here, who was born in Minneapolis, right? Um, English is first language. English was not my first language. Here I go to Portland State University, predominantly white, few Asian American, Asian kids, primarily Vietnamese. And um, how am I gonna take notes? How am I gonna follow the lectures? What did I do? I have to double my efforts. I had to double my efforts. Meaning, the white kid who was in the class with me, when he has to write a paper, he can write it the night before it's due in the morning. But for me, something that has worked all the way to graduate school is this. I will know when that paper is due. At the beginning of the class, what are you given? A syllabus, right? The syllabus will tell you you have three papers due, or maybe one paper due in March, or whatever the semester, spring, fall, right? I will mark it. There were no computers, no distractions, no Snapchat or video games. I will write it down. I would say, ah, oh, it's fall semester. We're starting, it's September 1st. My paper is due October 28th. Uh, the instructions will say it's supposed to be 10 pages long, this many words, right? Nowadays you submit everything online, but back then there was no online. So I will actually start writing the paper in September because I know it will take that long. English is not my language. So if I write a paragraph a day for something that's due in October 18th or 28th. Bandar Kanjifa. Do you know what Bandar Kanjifa means? I'm ahead of schedule. So I will write it down and say, oh, so by the time two weeks to go before, you know, before the uh, paper is due, my paper is finished. Right? Because I was not like the white kid whose primary language was English. Why am I telling you this story now? The reason I'm telling you this story is this, you have similar struggles, not so much in the language, but in terms of fitting in, in terms of trying to be part of where you live in the United States. In fact, you are a US citizen, you were born here, you just have as much rights as Jennifer or Joe or, or Josh, right? But unfortunately, there are odds against you. But are you gonna limit the odds against you? Are you gonna allow circumstances put you behind? No, you're gonna grab that opportunity. You're gonna proceed, you're gonna move forward because ultimately you're in charge of your destiny. It's not Farhan, it's not Liban, I have three kids too. It's not my uh, need for my kids. You, the individual, the young man who's looking at me or the young girl here, you are responsible for your own actions. You determine your future. The teacher might put you down, might make fun of you in some fashion, 
or they might be passive aggressive. You know what I mean, passive aggressive? They kind of put you down in an indirect way, but not directly to your face. The comments they uh, uh, I'll say to you, but ultimately, and some theme that uh, Aisha, right? Aisha and Mus Mus Mustafa, theme you guys all touched, which is you put yourself, uh, the, the same thing with the brother Levi, put yourself in the driving seat. Ultimately, you are in charge of your destiny. You can do it. If I did it, I'm an average kid, average guy. I wasn't smart, but I studied hard. And you have even better opportunity than I did 40 years ago. And that opportunity is what? You have support system. You have support system. You have that alone. You have your father. You have your mother. You have your cousins, right? You have support system. You want to use that to the fullest. All the opportunity afforded to you, you use it to the fullest. Ultimately, and in the, uh, the message I want to impart to you tonight is that you put yourself at the center of your existence. It's not going to be that kid who's going to tell you, let's go play with Roblox, right? No. I'm, I have no problem playing Roblox. There's nothing wrong with it. We all need distractions. We all need distractions. We can't be work, 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 steady, 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 steady. No, there's going to be time to watch NBA basketball game. You go out and throw the baseball, if you, if you watch baseball, I suppose, or hockey here in Wisconsin, not Wisconsin, what is it, uh, Minnesota, right? Hockey is a big thing. Those of you who go into the schools around here. But anyway, that is a message I want to impart to you, and that is put yourself at the center of your own existence. Your destiny is in your hands. And another thing the parents might wanna, don't want to hear, I usually tell is this. In fact, you're smarter than your parents. You're in a better position than your parents. Why do I say that? Mohammed, can you give me an idea why I would say that? You're smarter than Farhan? Huh? Yeah, it's my opinion, but the, I'll, just let's throw things around, you know, some ideas out. You went to school? Another thing is you were born? Do you have a better understanding of this culture than your dad does? No more, actually. Are you with me? So you have that added advantage that your parents don't, but you do. That is, you understand better. You live in this culture. You deal with them. You can pick the little things that I do not pick. I have a 14-year-old girl. Guess what? She's now becoming a PhD holder in finding faults uh, in people. When we go to a restaurant, we travel sometimes, and she will pick on things I will not pick on because my antenna is not that up. And she will say, I do not like how that guy was talking to us. Why are they, you know, uh, in Turkey, I'll give you a good example. We went to Turkey about two years ago. So one of the uh, touristic area near the, uh, what is it called? the uh, the Blue Mosque area, very aggressive society. You know, uh, what happened was some guy just grabbed us and said, you know, we have the best view, the best restaurants, the best this upstairs. We were a little bit hungry and said, okay, sure, we'll follow you, we'll up third floor. In fact, we had a great view of the, uh, the Blue Mosque. And, uh, but the guy treated us poorly. The guy, now you can think of probably the guy who, you know, uh, made us go upstairs and grabbed our hands and he knew we were tourists and um, uh, he's probably getting paid how many people he, he's able to recruit to go upstairs, right? Beautiful uh, uh, terrace. So just excellent view of the city and the mosques. And we come in and uh, the, the waiter didn't bother to seat us. It wasn't that, you know, full. There were British, I can tell they were British because of the accent on one end, and other people I couldn't tell, uh, white folks. Uh, and uh, it took his time to, to see us. So finally, we just seated ourselves. We sat down, and he comes in and says, okay, sorry, guys. 
was just paying, he was just sitting there, we can tell, he wasn't that busy. Um, so the kid said, all right, can we have, what do you have on your menu? Okay, show us, you know, it's a Turkish place. The kids are American, you know, they want to, they were sick and tired of eating Turkish meat, so they wanted burgers. They thought this might be a little bit more of a Western restaurant so they can have a hamburger. And, uh, and he goes, no, 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 we don't have hamburgers. If you want hamburgers, just go outside, go to, go to McDonald's. Before I can even, you know, I was gonna, we were hungry, I was gonna say to my daughter and kids, oh, let's eat. She goes, no, I don't like the way he talked to us. Right? She said, no, we're not sitting here. I'm sorry. She gets up. She was the leader. All five of us, her mom and I and the two other kids, we followed her. She said, we're not eating here. The reason being is because she knows certain things that I even have December for 30, 80 years I've been in this country. I didn't, maybe I see sometimes I ignore it, maybe, I don't know. But she knew it and she said, no. The idea is that Muhammad, you understand in this culture. You know better, right? Take to the fullest. Sometimes the parents here might be a little bit tough. Sit down, uh, you know, uh, just maybe they're focusing on one thing rather than the other. And, um, but you as the uh, a child who was born here or who came here at a young age who understands it better, it's incumbent upon you to actually educate your father and your mother and sit down and kind of reason with them and say, mom, dad, it's not that way. It's not what you think. But anyway, so that is the main message I wanted to, um, to part with you. But as I said, uh, life is a struggle. Education is a continuous process. It never stops. How do you continue that process? The theme, the central theme, one-on-one -on -one address tonight was what? Reading. It's a good habit to have. Reading is a good habit to have. It doesn't cost much. It's not a hassle. It's, in fact, uh, to your own benefit. Right? Nowadays, even, you know, uh, a lot of books, you can download them for free. Right? The libraries are primarily in your neighborhood. You can get any book in the world that you want. Reading frees up your mind. Reading enables you. Reading empowers you. Reading fertilizes your imagination. What did we talk, what did Farhan say here? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said what? Iqra. But Allah said, there's a tree right there. But making the chair, fandal, which by the way, I've not heard that in like so many years. Kado, I imagine that's what it means, right? Um, but we made that, right? So imagination, imagination. Life without imagination is not going to be successful. So what reading allows you to do is imagination. It opens up your mind, your creativity, right? You can take that time to be alone by yourself. I'm going to say something to you guys. I actually love reading. I cannot go to bed at night without reading. With all the distraction in the world, and nowadays we have kids, you know, all the uh, games and the TV on. And Somali parents, I always tell them, turn off the TV, please. <laughs> uh, when I visit my relatives and some other people, uh, I go to their houses, the TV is on and people are talking. I tell them, I came to visit you, Edo. I didn't come to watch CNN in your house. So let's turn it off. Nowadays, it's not CNN, it's the Tomali, uh, Somali TV channels. But anyway, reading, reading, reading. That's a good habit to have. Uh, let me also share a story uh, about reading. Alhamdulillah, my kids read, and I encourage them. The things that I do is that uh, books are everywhere. Magazines, I'm an avid reader. I got five different magazines. I do control their uh, online activities. I have an app right here where I shut it off, uh, and they know it. Uh, but when the kids are bored and you take away the video game, but it has to be negotiated. It's not because of punishment. You take away the video game, you turn off the TV, 
when they're sitting at home and they don't have much to do, guess what? If you just throw books around in the house, you will see them picking up that book and slowly sitting down and reading. Anyway, it's a good habit they picked up. They have Kindles. Relatively simple, easy. Farhan, maybe that's something you should encourage. $79 from Amazon, right? Uh, Kindle from Amazon, you can download so many free games. About two summers ago, my, uh, my 14 year old, my 11, they were a little younger then, every night around 9 p.m., it was summer, they were locked on their doors. And I, we didn't understand why. Um, they won't come out for the rest of the night. All of a sudden, Amazon sends me a bill. Actually, I get a text alert that says, do you know there were over $800 charges of books on your account for the last, for this month? Because nowadays, software is so smart. If they see something out of the ordinary in terms of spending, it's an alert. It's a fraud or something. So I get an alert from Amazon that says, uh oh, you know, you have $800 charged on your account, way more than I spend on books. And, um, and those books are downloaded. So I called the kids. I said, what's going on? Because I logged online and I see they've downloaded so many books. They were competing against each other, reading books. Granted, a lot, a lot of it were graphic novels. <laughs> you know what I mean, graphic novels, right? Um, they, like, you know, we talked to Amazon and I said, oh, okay, I'm so sorry. They said, well, we can reimburse you, but we'll have to take it back. My nine-year-old says, Dad, do it. We already read it. We already read them all. So I get my money back. <laughs> and they read it. So what I, the, the, the story is that um, making sure that you, know, you read. Reading is a good habit to have. And that what you can read on this world from time immemorial that have been written, it's amazing. Whether it's religion, it's philosophy. It's, you can read about sports. You like sports, right? You could read about you know, Muhammad Ali. You could read about uh, uh, the uh, race and struggle in sports. That in itself is, is, is reading, right? So if there is one thing, Ma'ad Farhan, and I will be part of this kind of discussions, I will. Um, one thing that reading will allow you, as I said, it's going to, you know, it's, it's, it builds up your imagination, your confidence. It allows you to travel to places that you do not know, right? You, you said, uh, I think it was you, Muhammad, when you were saying that uh, you can put yourself in the shoes of the writer, right? You can also put yourself in the shoes of the story itself, right? You follow the character. You see what's going on, right? You imagine it, what it's like, you know, uh, that character is going through, the build-up. So all of that, it's that elastic brain you were talking about. Your brain is elastic. The less, if you don't use it, it shrinks. It's just like muscle. If you lift and lift and lift, what happens? Younger people, you build your body, your body, you know, the mass, right? You become stronger. Your brain is just like that. The more you read, the more you power, I mean, you force yourself. Initially, it might be boring, just like any other habit. When you initially starting a new habit, if it is like getting up 6 a.m. every morning to do, uh, you know, prayers, it might be difficult. But guess what? Once you get into that habit, you'll be fine. I'm a Somali. You can tell I love tea, right? And the tea we drink a lot oftentimes have what? Way too much sugar. Yes or no? And sugar is not good for you. It took me a while to, uh, to um, uh, get rid of sugar in my tea. What did I do? I started, you know, kind of limiting the, the amount of, in, you know, uh, sugar in my tea. Today, I cannot drink tea in any other Somali house or, uh, or a place. It's way too sweet for me. Now, sometimes when I go to the mosque, you know, during the, uh, uh, you know, uh, traweh, somebody brings food and right and tea, I cannot taste that tea at all. Guess what? Because I told myself, to drink tea without sugar. 
I'm not diabetic or anything. It's just about my age. It's, it's, it's good to get rid of that. Right? So it's just like that. Initially, when you pick up those books, it's not going to be good. But once you train your mind, your brain, your body, you will get used to it. So education, self-improvement, self-confidence, believing in yourself is a lifetime endeavor. It's a struggle you will continue to have for the rest of your life. You live in this country, you are different. It's a fact. But you know how I put my difference? How I think I'm different? I'm different from my brothers. I have five brothers and a sister. I'm different from them. I'm not like them. It's the same thing here. You might not be Josh or Jennifer, right? You are Muhammad and Shu'aib and, uh, you know, the immigrant uh, Salman, right? Uh, Salman. But guess what? That's who you are. Be proud of who you are. And say, I'm never going to be anybody else. I'm going to make this person who I am better, stronger, smarter, leader, not a follower, leader. You're not going to let another kid to take you to the, to the wrong route. So and I would love to have actually conversations back and forth. Uh, I was a teacher at a young age. I went to graduate school. Uh, I went to uh, Colorado University. I remember when I uh, first started, I was teaching uh, 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 principal level classes, economics, econ 101, 400 white kids looking at me. I'm only 24 years old, walking into the class, and I see those white faces just mm, looking at me, right? And I developed this routine where I would make fun of their whiteness, actually. Nowadays, I don't know if you can do that. <laughs> So what I would say to them is, guess what? Uh, I cannot tell you guys apart. You all look alike. And they were like, no, 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 we don't look alike. Look, she's blonde. This guy has a, a darker hair. Do you see the skin tone is different? You know, she's got freckles. It's like, no, no, no. To an African eye, you look the same. <laughs> right? Yeah. It's absolutely true. To them, it's also the same way when they look at us. So what did that allow me to do is, you know, appreciate the differences between us, and also knowing in the fact that I'm black, I'm young, I'm African, I'm 24 years old, and I'm in front of them. And I did not speak as good of an English now than I did back then, I would imagine, right? What did I, what did, one thing uh, I've learned from teaching over the years, at that time, was I went to a seminar, and uh, the seminar was, okay, was training uh, to be a teaching assistant at the time. So I was told, hey, if a, teach, if a student asks you a question, and you do not know, and you're not sure, don't make up an answer. Don't make up an answer. What you should tell them is, I do not know, but I will look into it, I will research it, and I will get back to you. Can you tell me somebody, any wisdom you can draw from that message that you can apply to life? Yeah, you don't know everything, right? But what allows you to go back and do the research is your reading skills, right? Or your research skills. You go back and say, hmm, let me ask Dr. Ido. Maybe she knows that. She will provide that answer. Um, I know uh, we're taking, I, I mean, uh, but anyway, I am going to conclude this. I'm extremely uh, uh, honored to be here today with you. But please keep one thing in mind. The youth, the Salmans and the Muhammads. I can pick on Salman because I know his parents. <laughs> um, there is this thing in American history, which is, it might not be true, but mostly it's true. 
Each generation is supposed to be doing better than the previous generation. So we are all first generation immigrants here. Correct? Your goal, all that reading, self-confidence, self-empowerment, self-improvement, the end is what? You're gonna be better. You're gonna have a better lifestyle, future than your hard-working immigrant background, right? Now we all struggle with first-generation immigrants, right? But the second generation, you guys are going to be better. You're going to do, do better than your parents. I want to conclude with uh, Brother Levan. You are absolutely the epitome of, of never giving up. And I'm so proud of you. I'm so glad to hear that story today. This past summer, no, two summers ago, 2019, before COVID, a friend of mine I, I went to school, primary school with in Somalia, came to Minnesota. He um, came for a wedding. Thanks to social media, we kind of connected with each other, you know. Um, I last saw him probably in 82, 83, when I left Somalia. Um, but that guy, I don't know about you, Levan, whether the same group he was. He was about to graduate from medical school in Somalia when the Civil War broke out in Mogadishu in 1990. Just like everybody else, his family left Mogadishu. They were from the north. Uh, they went to Ethiopia, Hargeisa, this Djibouti. Finally, they came to Canada in 1993. Uh, knew he was about to graduate within two months when the war broke out. Guess what? They came to Canada. He couldn't get a, you know, legal papers in Canada. He moves to Minnesota, actually. He was one of the first people to move to Minnesota. He was working at his assembly line. One day, in around 98, 99, he said, this is not what I wanted to do all my life, and I'm not gonna do it anymore. He picked up the phone, he called some of his relatives, friends. He said, I wanna fulfill my life to, lifelong dream, which is to become a medical doctor. And uh, he, he made the calculation, all right, I was almost finished medical school in Somalia, in which the language of instruction was actually Italian, right? Or I can start new in America. Which one would be easier for me? Thus, he decided Italy would be a better option for him. So he went to Italy. He just walked away from the United States, moved to Milan, uh, went back to school, got his medical degree, did more medical degrees, Today, he is almost retired a uh, physician. In fact, helping with COVID in Mogadishu right now, lives in Italy. Um, so he never gave up his lifetime, you know, dream of becoming a medical doctor. He could have stayed in America, you know, and dead end jobs, but he said, no, I'm not gonna do it, moved on. So when I hear stories of resilience of that nature, it's so amazing. So all take note of uh, brother. Uh, Levan's note. But thank you so much, Farhan. Uh, uh, thank you very much, team. And Mahsentin. And Nibamalu, <laughs> حجاب كقاضو مركا ضدك عرض الجو حيلين عروض دقمة أقول كلا جاك هاني عروضي مركا يانو هذا مرة أن بيش سدي ده ده نيروب كيميت وعلى يقول عروضها مريكن كلا جاك هنا يو مع غل بطنه وحنقول أنا جا سومالي مع اللي كنا قضي كيني أنا كنا قضي مريكن أنا كنا قضي عروضها مريكن كأو عغل بطن لكن كل سوني حوا عمقان إسكو فلنا بالي ده واحد إسكو فلنا ليرادا عمقان 
isku filnaanta asxuun ka handii uu helo wax la gaari karo ma aha waxa marka maanta la sameeynayo oo ugu badan isku filnaantaas ah kamid ah carruurta waa la sheekaystaa waxa kamid ah waxay ku leeyeen cunugu markuu hay school dhameeyo meeshu aad ilaa uu ku wareersan yahay wuxuu dooran lahaa hooyadii waxa laga yaabaa inay leedahay aabihi ee lacag u baahan yahay marka dhaqtarni way u maleynayaan lacag badan laga sameeyay marka cunugu waxa laga dhaqtar gasho oo ku qas cunugu uu san jeclayn marka cunugu uu wareerayo hata wuxuu doorto ma garan karo waxa kamid ah cunugu asago fiican inuu saaxiib xun aado oo wuxuu rabaa iska noqdo dabaran raacdi wax la hay raac iska noqdo kalsooni laanta kamid ah qofkii inuu san isku quraanku ku dadaala aqra ukum ubay ibn ka'ab ubay ibn ka'ab waa ninka quraanka idin kugu akhrino qofkii raba quraankii sidii loo soo dajiyay ha ku daydo abdullah ibn mas'ud ha ku daydo in qaa'id saxaabiga la yiraahdo khalid ibn mulid waa qaa'id waa waa safety ilaahay oo aan gal kala gelinin marka nabiga sallallahu alayhi wasallam ku fiiriyo umid walba wuxuu u tilmaami jiray wuxuu ku fiican yahay nin jilicsan oo arkaya markaas ay u leeyahay umad madaxa u noqon adiga waa ku liidata marka umada in oo la dhiso wax badan loo sheego adinkana u imaadaan ee barfasara u imaadaan aad way diisan aad tiraadaan ciladaas ay haysato ee waxaas waan ku xumahay ama waxaas oo ku fiican ay maxan sameeya waxaan yiraahdo qofka faashilka ama qofka ku fo laakiin midka faashilka waa midka mooshu ku kufay fadhiyo waay marka wixii ku liid inaad ka cadaal rabaa isku daydo isku daydo isku daydo marka dambe guul aad gaari najaah baad gaari ee rabbana atina fid dunya hasanatan wa fil akhirati hasanah wa qina adhab an-nar rabbana la tuzigh qulubana ba'da id hadaytana wa hab lana min ladunka rahmah innaka antal wahhab allahumma taqabbal siyamana wa salatana wa qiraatana allahumma ij'al tajammu'ana hadha tajammu'an marhuman wa ij'al min ba'dihi tafarruqana tafarruqan ma'suman إله سبحانه وتعالى دمجا أن الله دافع صون كأننا الله أقبله إن حال ربعين لا تدار وقفك مسلم كأنا وحك استو تدار أيو ودين تأيو هوي جدا بواي قفك هدو تدار لا إمادو وسمر لا إمادو وجارا يا جوشي سو جاري إن نبا وحالي لو حوج على عنقي سو حول جعل إن أوبرت وحالي هذا منطقة أما فلسفة ده يولا جعل مركب حوي روينا فلسفة برضو فلسفة برشة ده دروي كحل لا يرتاحي ما دوين ككلو أدي بدن تاعي لحسن وبرنا هاي أرتجي هو وراي ما نقول دمينا يوحو جوجي ماشوا قبل عبي مركو إسلي يا هاي نتيجة على جاري دورا واحد مقدمتين يو نتيجة الله لسا لا مقدمة الله لسا نتيجة على جسوا سارة إن مركب دمو إذا أرتجي يقول يا جاري دون تا أبي وانا بقص بمركب خالد أو دمينا يو بروفيسور كمان كعشر كود دمينا هاي يا وحو يري وصار دميني لحسن صار وندي واد دالني لكن وحدو جاتان سيدات أول رسنتين أنا أنا أول رسنة وأردت أن أشاهد 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 أن أن أشاهد 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 أن 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 dadka ka waxay din ka badiyo oo ahlu dhikriga weydiya wixii na noqonin qofka wuxuu kaaga fiican yahay la weydiya waa la la tashada marka waxa la rabaa insha Allah taala inaad ka faa'iidaan in badan aad ku soo noqnoqotaan oo barnaamijta aan sii wadno guulana aan gaarno wali xilliga samarka soo socdo banaanaha lagu qabto safar la isla aado wax badan laga mira dhaliyo mararka qaar kooda hata dhulki baraka isna la tago dhulki caaradi la tago wax badan la soo arko aan la doonaya insha Allah taala مرك الله هيدا مبارك يسوع دواذا إن شاء الله تعالى مركزته مسائد كوائدين فورين يا هاي هذا بالله التوفيق وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين